Hey guys, I'm S. Dan Wolf, and welcome back to the channel, and I did not get a lot done for episode 11. I did actually not have a lot of gameplay time at all this week. I got to play, I got to mess around with this idea a little bit, played The Sims a little bit, and then that was it. I was on the road, kind of uh, not sitting here in my little hermit hole playing video games like I would have preferred uh, this week, but... Anyways, we're back. I hope you've had a, a good weekend, a good, good productive weekend. The only thing I, 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 the only thing I hate about Sundays is, like, Sunday mornings are great. That's usually like, you know, a lot of undisturbed, uh, you know, video game time. I don't really, you know, there's not, a, there's not a lot of places to be, or you know, Sunday's really chill. But always it sucks, particularly if you work uh, Monday through um, Friday. Sunday at about six, well, once like six or seven o'clock hits, that realization of having to actually get back to work sets in. And uh, yeah, then I'm like, oh crap, we are that much closer to Monday. But anyways, what I did start on, check this out, using one of Tia's ideas, I have started Camp Cherokee. And this is that extra little, um, you know, like that extra little uh, activity item that I said you could sign up for. Actually, you know, you, you actually pay extra for this. But you can come in, they bring you into Camp Cherokee, and you actually spend the weekend in a tent, um, like kind of on the banks of the creek here. And they take you, um, like they get you out in the canoes, or they can take you kayaking. Um, I brought in, these are Florida mans. These are actually his... Um, kind of like uh, staff buildings and veterinary buildings, but I have kind of turned them into like the support buildings for the camp. So, you know, you've got those two over there, and then this area, this big one, this larger one um, that he actually has set up as a, a large veterinary center, I figured this is where they could take them in and they feed them or they can do different, um, like, you know, different... Uh, classes inside there and stuff but this is mainly like uh like we were envisioning like an outdoor type experience and uh yeah so i figured it's like a friday saturday thing um they teach you they like i figured they could teach you how to like fly fish um just like the creek experience that is added on um i was even figuring like i don't know like you know you could even we could probably even do another little spot like if I move these trees, this could be another little drop-off point if they wanted to um, canoe or kayak all through the creek area here by the bison. That's why I kind of um, I, I took the bison area out of the creek and I put the I pushed the fence back and I put some of this. Uh, I put some foliage up just to try to stop people from, you know, like, well, I figured you they would have guides with them and stuff as well. So it's not like they would be able to stop on the bank and get over and like try to reach through and, and touch the bison and stuff like that. Like, you know, some people probably would. Um, but I figured they could make their way down through here, um, even that could be a part of the uh, a part of the morning or the afternoon, and they get out back at the campsite. Or, of course, that we'll put them in and we will extend the uh, extend the creek out, and you know, pick, they drop off here and then they walk back to the camp. Um, I just figured like something like this, you would want uh, you would have a lot of. Uh, a lot of activities set up for the day. Um, I want to get like maybe get like a big fire pit out here um, for the evenings and at night. And uh, they've got some bicycles set up. Maybe they could do some uh, like one part of the uh, the itinerary is like uh, mountain biking and all that. But yeah, all of that area kind of just encompasses. Uh, the Cherokee campground over here and I think it fits out really good kind of like in this little teardrop area right here um, how it kind of converges from the path and kind of breaks off from the main area and it's really like private and secluded over here and uh, so and I was also thinking too like looking back in in the larger scope of things um, if we do want to cross the road over here, I mean, I essentially cross underneath the bridge. Um, I don't know if we want to do maybe African animals over here or keep the zoo on this side and just start some of the African areas over here. So I don't know. We'll kind of have to just get some feedback from you guys and uh, just kind of see what you think. Um, we will turn the, uh, the border kind of up this way. 
as far as backstage and and support goes and staff parking and uh, and all that and you know um probably even be able to just uh have some more like veterinary centers out here um trade centers stuff like that this will like all of this can kind of be separated by this large um tree line right here as far as getting up into the uh, the camp area the bison area and you wouldn't be able to see um, a lot of that backstage stuff so I don't know there's still a lot of planning left to do and like I said we didn't do a lot of planning this week as far as not having a lot of uh, game time so this is kind of the whole this is kind of the gist of what I got done this particularly towards the end of this week and uh, <clears throat> a little bit yesterday evening so but nonetheless I think it's uh, that is something we wanted to check off our list and another thing we want to do too is get some hiking trails um, <coughs> excuse me a lot of you guys were talking about getting some hiking trails up and uh, you know just these extra little experiences definitely need to get a restaurant over here somewhere I think here in front of the like right here would be a good area to get us a little restaurant set up and uh, then kind of decide what animals we want over here um, on the other side of the uh, on the other side of the uh, kind of like the Wolf Ridge area over here um, that's the thing you know you don't know like should I kind of encompass it more over here like back with the with the gario area maybe do some saltwater crocs maybe encompass a komodo dragon um enclosure over here so see there's a lot of different directions we can take and uh you know a kind of a little more filling in i need to do as far as um foliage goes and maybe some uh maybe even get some cliffs over here on the uh, on looking down kind of on the uh, on the Cherokee campground and maybe do some hiking trails um, up in those cliffs so they would take them out and you would cross the road right here and up into the uh, up into the hiking area that would be for everybody but you know the uh, the campground people could kind of partake in that too um, maybe like as a part of their schedule as a part of their day and uh, yeah so I thought that was a cool little item there a little cool little section to kind of add some more of to the uh, to the history and kind of like the lore, if you will, of uh, of Pine Creek Zoo and the Cherokee Campground back there, and then, of course, for like like we said, for the for the more animal inclined people, um, we really need to get in here and start thinking about some more enclosures, um, and you know, just all of that kind of how we want to uh, you know how we want to see that happen, and what kind of species we want to we want to incorporate in here so we're definitely going to get an African section um, I just don't know uh, I don't know what and where um, or, or like where the best place to do that would be and uh, you guys were even saying it'd be cool like to do a Dollywood um, type of mountainside um, avi av aviary um, to like for the bald eagles and stuff like that and like birds of like predator birds um, You guys were saying that would be pretty cool. So I am just still just in shock that we were able to uh, Kind of just keep this level of semi realism especially since like you guys know how fantasy oriented I am um, I am just really really proud of this place and kind of the uh, kind of like the directions we were able to take it and you guys were able to stop me from getting too weird and too out there um, that is just uh, I think that is another big accomplishment as far as this zoo goes like taking a creator like me totally out of that fantasy element and really making me kind of um, you know essentially rein it in and and um, you know just kind of bring it back down to earth and think of solutions and and different ways about designing instead of just going completely islands of adventure and uh, you know just going absolutely crazy uh, but I think it's like uh, it's like I was telling Ruby and and a couple other people it has been fun uh, to essentially um, get out of my comfort zone and really get in here and uh, and make myself take the realism aspect of it serious and uh, and and like we said sprinkling a little bit of s dan wolf in um and i think that has just been really really fun um oh a couple of you guys said we need to do the um the maggie i think it what was it maggie b yeah <laughs> some some of you guys were talking about this i saw drew and 
and uh, Jaunty, a couple people did the <laughs> did the large Maggie B trick. So remember, if you do uh, if you do that trick, go to one of the animals. Um, we got to see a red panda. Let's see. I'm a, I'm lost in my own zoo here. Oh yeah, right here. Let's see. Do I? Sorry, you are Maggie B. Oh my God. This this ball of floof is looking for some food. I guarantee it. <laughs> that was a cute first tw uh, first like cheat. I think. What about the little doll sheep? This is gonna be slightly creepy. <laughs> that is pretty neat. Hey, at least we know now. Out of all of this, um, we know cheats aren't out of the uh, out of the out of the question now. So they are definitely uh, they're definitely that that will be a thing. I got before we go. I've got to see a. Oh. They have overfed this guy. Look at the big hooves. That is cool. But anyways, guys, yeah. So I just wanted to kind of jump in and get your thoughts mainly on the uh, on the Cherokee campground over here. And if you guys think that would be a cool kind of extra ticket, you know, like sign up item. They bring them in in the summertime and stuff and the family or the kids or whatever can come in and uh, and get kind of like this uh the, kind of like this controlled um camping environment so maybe they live in the city maybe the parents don't have the means to um you know to really take them camping maybe the parents don't know really where to even begin or where to start with camping and uh yeah they could bring the kids in here and they could get a uh i think a pretty cool little camping experience over there and one more thing I want to show you before we jump out of here is another thing about your guys' feedback. Um, you guys definitely, most for, for the most part, you were not feeling the, um, the glass fence that we put up. So what I did was I went back with the electric fence, but look, now we've got this gap here. So you would be able to, you know, this fence would stop people from being able to reach out and touch the electric fence and the bears, they pretty much know to stay away from it like that's their border. So now I think that just looks a lot better. Um, my buddy uh, Mike, I think, uh, ES Punk, he was saying like it's just the glass was so intrusive. It was, it was kind of just, it was too bulky. It was too much kind of running through this area. So yeah, like I said, left the actual barrier up here and then just kind of push the uh, push the actual animal barrier um, out a little bit farther away from the fence where you couldn't really mess with it or touch it. And I think that just looks a lot better. Now the fence doesn't actually take away from the animals or the scenery back there. You see how it's all just um, kind of just flows better now. And then also, too, Coaster Designer was talking about um, maybe adding some flowers or some plants between this fence and the wolf fence. And so I just brought in some really, really pretty azaleas to kind of bend around that area. And that really adds some, uh, it adds a nice pop of color over here and just doesn't make it look like, um, like he was saying, so prison-like through here. Um, it just kind of, just kind of spruces that uh that whole area up a little bit. Um, a lot of people ask about when I'm going to let people in. I think that'll come more like when we get towards the end of the zoo, just because I think all the people just really, really um, put a put really put a lot of stress on the frame rate. Like you can even see now when the game's unpaused, I'm getting to a point where uh, where frames are slightly, slightly becoming an issue. And if you start letting a bunch of people in, it really like just as as um, just kind of um, what's the word I'm thinking of um, exasperates uh, that whole problem. 
And uh, so probably we'll, I know you guys like seeing the people coming in. I don't even actually have a spawn point yet for people, but we'll work on that more when the zoo is about to be finished anyway. Uh, I don't know how much longer the zoo actually has. I mean, I guess we'll just keep running with your guys' ideas. I mean, obviously the zoo can't just go on forever and ever, but um, as long as the frames hold up and we can actually still get in here and and build and you guys are watching it and, and enjoying it, you know, we'll keep going. But um, yeah, bringing the people in for some reason with these planet games, you're just, uh, you were kind of just asking for uh, for lower and lower frames. So, but anyways, guys, yeah, I'm S. Dan Wolf. Thank you for stopping by and hanging out with me for episode 11. Be on the lookout for episode 12 early this week. Hopefully I'll have a little more playing time. And uh, yeah, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you. See ya.